another DIY freeze-dried complete meal in a jar to add to your collection. Hey guys, it's Jara with Wicked Prepared. Welcome back everyone. I've got another meal in a jar for you today. Now the meal in a jar that I'm doing today, as well as the vast majority of meals in a jar that we have on our channel, they're made in glass mason jars, but they're made with all dry ingredients and there's no pressure canning involved at all. So there's no special equipment needed and really anyone can make these meals in a jar. Now what I really love most about these meals in a jar is they really bridge the gap for me between convenience food and home cooked food. They really are so convenient and so quick and easy because everything that you need is right in the jar. All you have to do is add water, brief cooking time, and then you have a complete meal. It's amazing. So it's kind of along the lines of something like, say, a hamburger helper, but it's so much better than a hamburger helper because number one, you've made it from scratch. You know everything that's going into it. You know where those ingredients came from. There's not a lot of preservatives. There's not a lot of yucky things in it. And another thing is if you have ever made hamburger helper, you know you take that box of mix, but you also need to have fresh hamburger meat. You need to have fresh milk. You need to have other ingredients. But the meals in a jar, all you need is water. They've got meat in them, they've got vegetables in them, they've got any sauces, any um, milk, dairy, cheese, anything that you need is already inside the jar. They're completely shelf stable, so they're great for emergencies because they don't require any refrigeration and you can make that complete meal without having to open your fridge if you've got the power out or something like that. They also cook up very quickly. They usually require a very brief cooking time, which is important in an emergency because if your power's out and your electric stove isn't working, maybe you're using your camp stove or your emergency stove and you may not have that much fuel so it's important to have things that are going to cook up quickly but give you a good hearty meal but they're also good for just your everyday emergency or your everyday busy day when you just need a really fast and easy dinner and you don't have time to pull anything else together they make wonderful gifts and they make a wonderful addition to a gift basket they're great to give to someone who's had a baby who's had a surgery anything like that so these meals in a jar are really a wonderful thing to have in your pantry the meal in a jar that I'm making today was inspired by something that I saw on Pinterest. I was scrolling through Pinterest and this dish caught my eye because it was colorful, it looked delicious, it looked easy to make. The dish was called chicken pot pie pasta. And I thought I really need to make this into a meal in a jar because this would be a perfect jar meal. It was even more perfect because it included a lot of the ingredients that are on sale for the month of April, like chicken, chicken gravy, and peas. And if you happen to be watching this video the first day that it's released, you're in luck because the corn is on sale in the spring sale, which ends today. It's on sale 50% off. So this is a great opportunity to pick up some of these ingredients at a discount and make a bunch of jar meals for less. Every month I like to make jar meals with ingredients that are on sale. So if you want to make sure that you always know what foods are on sale and get some ideas for jar meals to go along with those, you can subscribe to our text alerts. Just text sale to the number right down at the bottom of the screen and I'll also put it in the description box and you'll get notifications right to your phone every time there's a sale or a coupon code and we'll send along some recipes to go along with those items. So let's get ready to get started making this meal in a jar. Now like I said there's no special equipment needed it's really pretty simple. Um, basically what you need is a quart size wide mouth mason jar with a lid. We're going to be using a canning funnel just to get things into the jar easily and then we need just our basic measuring utensils cups and spoons and that's really about it. So for the ingredients that we're going to use I'm going to be using egg noodles. Now when I tested the recipe I used whole wheat egg noodles just because that's what we tend to use when it's available just for a little extra nutrition. I know that for looks it's going to look better with the plain white egg noodles so today I'm going to be using the plain white egg noodles. And our sauce is going to be made from these two ingredients um, heavy cream powder and velouté which is um, a chicken gravy mix that's specially made for this type of purpose. And then of course we've got the diced chicken, peas, carrots, and corn. And then for seasoning I'm just going to be using some chicken bouillon and some thyme. And that's it. I just want to make a little note about the bouillon. The chicken bouillon that I'm using today is Thrive Life. Sometimes it does matter um, with certain products it might make a difference what brand you're using because they could have different flavors different sodium levels I know I did a video recently I told you guys about um, my experience with different brands of sour cream powder and how they were so different that they weren't really interchangeable in the recipe not anything really good or bad about either brand more just the difference in flavor so the bullion that I'm using today is Thrive Life and I do try to reach for this one um, 
more often nowadays because I just took a look at the ingredients on some of my bullions and like this is this brand right here. You can see a lot of these ingredients. It's got all of these different things I can't um, pronounce. And then I found that the Nor brand was probably the worst. If you look at all the ingredients in here, there's all sorts of different things. All sorts of chemicals that I can't um, pronounce. Um, it does have a monosodium glutamate, which of course is MSG. I know some people are super sensitive to that. I believe that's in this one as well. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Third ingredient, MSG. But so I did notice the difference in the Thrive Life's ingredient list. It's just a lot more pure and a lot more natural. And so that's why I'm trying to reach for this bullion whenever I can. They only have chicken and beef though. So sometimes I am reaching for a different brand. But just keep in mind that if you use, um, depending on what brand of bullion you're using, there could be a difference in flavor. So you can taste and adjust. Um, you can always do that with any seasoning in any recipe, obviously. And obviously if you're trying to cut down on sodium, you can reduce the amount of bullion a little bit. And people can salt and add seasonings to theirs after it's done being cooked if that's what they prefer. Okay, so we're gonna get started here and just open up our jar. And I'm gonna go ahead and just put the um, funnel in the jar so that we can get all the ingredients in easily. And the first thing I'm gonna add to the jar is gonna be two cups of egg noodles. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get our sauce mixture ready because there's just one extra step that I'm gonna do for this um, jar meal. So I'm gonna just take a very small bowl and I'm going to add our two sauce ingredients to this bowl. And that's going to be the heavy cream powder and the velouté, which is the chicken gravy mix. We're going to use a quarter cup of each. I'm going to go ahead and add the velouté first. Just right to the bowl. Almost time to open another can. And next I'm going to add a quarter cup of the heavy cream powder. But what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to pass it through a um, fine mesh strainer. And then I'm going to go ahead and blend these two together. And that's just going to make sure that we don't have clumps because um, this, this heavy cream powder is a little bit clumpy. And just to make sure that everything's going to blend very well into our sauce. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the heavy cream powder in here and just rub it with my cup um, measure. And it's going to go right through this mesh and it's going to make it a very um, fine loose powder and get rid of all the clumps. Because even on the instructions um, for this heavy cream powder, it mentions that for the best results, you should use a blender and let it set overnight. And I'm not going to be doing any of that. And I want to make sure that this is going to blend into our sauce very well. And this seems to do the trick. So I'm just going to use a whisk to combine these. So in a way, this is kind of making like a cream of chicken type of mixture here. So I am going to go ahead and add this into this jar. I'm going to use a little utensil just to make sure that I don't spill any. Now what I'm going to do now, because you can see that this powder is starting to filter in among the noodles, so I'm just going to give this a little bit of a tap and a shake to combine these ingredients more. This just allows us to add more ingredients to our jar because some of the more powdery ingredients are going to occupy the same space that the more bulky ingredients do. You can see that's filtered all right down in there. So the next thing I'm going to add is going to be the carrots. And I'm only going to use a quarter cup of these carrots because being dehydrated, they will swell up a little bit and they do have a very um, strong flavor. So a quarter cup is going to be all we need. So next I'm going to go ahead and add my chicken bouillon and my thyme right into the middle of the jar. I'm going to use a tablespoon of this chicken bouillon. And that's about the equivalent of three cups of broth. And then I'm just going to use a quarter teaspoon of the thyme. Now that's equivalent to one click of the style. I'm just going to open this up. Give it one click and we're good to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my peas and my corn. And that's going to be a half a cup of each of these. Half a cup of peas. And 
and a half a cup of corn. Now you can see this jar is getting pretty full and I still have to add the chicken. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little bit more shaking and tapping, but um, the reason that I put some of these veggies down here is because of the color. It's easier to see um, you know, the, the layers that are in the middle than it is to see what's right up at the top. And so we've got all this white down here. I wanted to add some color here in the middle and then the white chicken will go on top. It's just gonna look prettier. It's just an aesthetics thing. So next I'm gonna add the chicken and I'm just gonna be adding three quarters of a cup of the chicken. So there's a quarter cup. And then I've just got to get an additional half a cup right in the top of the jar. That was close. You can press this down. Now, if I was gonna put this away on my shelf and I wanted this to last long term, like more than a year, I would add an oxygen absorber to the top and just seal it up with the lid. And then that would make it last for many years. It would probably last five to seven years at least. I'm gonna be fixing this one up tonight so I can show you all how it cooks up and what it looks like when it's finished. So I'm not gonna add the oxygen absorber. I'm just gonna go ahead and put on the lid. But if you are using oxygen absorbers, a 200 cc oxygen absorber is plenty for a jar this size. Now some people will vacuum seal these with their food saver or their vacuum sealer. I'm not fully convinced that that will um, make it last as long as an oxygen absorber because you can't remove all of the oxygen with a vacuum sealer, but it certainly would make it last for quite a while. But my choice is to use oxygen absorbers when I'm expecting these to last for a long term. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and prepare this meal to show you just how quick and easy it is. I'm gonna be using my Coleman um, butane stove. This is what we typically use for cooking indoors in an emergency. And I've just got um, a skillet here. So I've got my jar meal. I'm just gonna go ahead and open it up and empty it into the skillet. Now you can see that is a decent amount of food for a little quart mason jar. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna be adding three cups of water right into the skillet. Now if you wanted to um, cut down on dishes, you could always measure your water right in the mason jar because they do have graduated markings. So that's three cups of water. And I'm just gonna go ahead and stir this until everything is moistened and all of the powder is pretty much dissolved into the water. And then we're gonna turn on the heat. Okay, so now that this is all pretty much moistened and blended together, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn on the heat. I'm just gonna turn that down to about medium because we wanna bring it up to a simmer. And then we'll turn it down low and put a lid on it. You can already see how nice and creamy that sauce is gonna be. Now since I'm doing this on a Coleman stove, it actually kind of reminded me that these meals are really great to take camping with you. If you wanna be able to cook like a nice hearty meal but not spend all your time doing it, um, you can bring meals like these along. If you don't wanna bring glass jars camping or if you're doing some backpacking or something like that, these can be packed up in Mylar bags um, you can seal them up with an oxygen absorber and they can last for just as long. Or if you know you're going camping and you're making these meals just for that camping trip and they're not going to be sitting around any longer than like a week or so, you could always put them into Ziploc bags or um, Tupperware containers, you know, something like that. All right, so now that you can see that this is starting to simmer, I'm just going to go ahead and turn it down real low. And I have to really turn it down because this stove cooks pretty hot. I'm gonna go ahead and put a lid on this and I'm just gonna simmer it. It's only gonna take about 10 to 15 minutes and I'm just gonna open it up and stir it occasionally and keep an eye on it at a very low heat. Just enough to keep it simmering but not enough to burn it on the bottom.
Okay, so it hasn't even been 10 minutes. It's been eight minutes and you can see that the sauce has thickened up. And I'm gonna go ahead and give this a taste and see if the noodles have softened. And um, you know, the chicken and the vegetables have all softened and refreshed. And if they have, then this is about done. I would just let it set a little bit um, to you know thicken up a little bit and cool off. So I'm gonna give this a taste. All right, so that is definitely done. I got a clean spoon here because that one went in my mouth. But this is definitely finished and ready to serve. And that was just eight minutes of cook time. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a little plate so we can serve this up and try it. Okay. super tasty guys this is so yummy and it's just so homey and so comforting this is a really kid friendly meal so if you have kids I think this is something that kids would love this would be something that would be very comforting to have if you're sick and that brings up another great use for these jar meals if mom usually does the cooking and mom's sick and mom really can't do the cooking somebody else has to do it or even if mom still has to do it it's a lot easier to do something like this than it is to prepare a traditional meal so a jar meal like this would be really great to bring to a friend who was sick. Great to have on your shelf for when you are sick. This is really delicious and really comforting. And I would know because I've been sick and I've been eating a lot of comfort food. Okay guys, thank you for watching today. I hope you all enjoyed this latest addition to our collection of freeze-dried meals in a jar. We sometimes get questions about things like the shelf life and how many servings these make. If you do preserve these with an oxygen absorber, then they're usually going to last at least, you know, five to eight years on the shelf. That could be changed if you put an ingredient in that has a lower shelf life, but most of the ingredients that I use have a very long shelf life. And so if you preserve this properly, it's going to last a very long time. Even if you don't use an oxygen absorber, I've had meals like this on my shelf sometimes for over a year that were still perfectly fine. As far as the servings go, that can depend a lot on who you're serving and what you're serving with the dish. Most of these jar meals serve anywhere from three to five people. If it's something like a soup that you know has more water added, it can serve more people, but that really does depend. I can tell you Mr. Wicked Prepared could have finished that whole skillet all by himself. He's a big guy and he's a big eater. If you're feeding younger children with smaller appetites, you could get quite a few more servings out of a dish like that. And of course, it also depends on what you're serving alongside. If you're having side dishes, salad, bread, things like that, it's gonna go further. But we absolutely love having meals like this on our shelves, both for emergencies and just for every day. We will have a printable recipe card for you for this meal. We'll put that on our website and I'll have the link down in the description box, as well as links to all of the different items that I used or talked about in my video. Don't forget to check out the last day of Thrive Life's Big Spring Sale. There's some awesome bargains over there. Don't forget to use delivery if you do so that you can get free shipping and the best savings. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, leave me a pie emoji down in the comments. And don't forget to check out this playlist that has a lot more of our meals in a jar on it. I'm Jarrah with Wicked Prepared. Survive today, thrive tomorrow. We'll see you next time.